All right, what's up, machining crew? My name is Nicholas Acock, and I've been around machine shops my entire life, literally born and raised in one. I'm 33 years old now, and I've been officially machining for 18 years. What you're seeing on the screen right now are feeds and speeds from our shop. In this masterclass series, I'm going to teach you everything I know about dialing in feeds and speeds to get the best performance out of your machines. Let's dive into our first topic. What are feeds and speeds? What's up, machining crew? Today, we are getting into the feeds and speeds masterclass series. Now this is going to be a series of videos because I can't shove this all in one video. There's too much to cover and we are going to go ahead and start with the structure of this video because at the very end I'm going to give you five tips on how to get started. So if you have a part next week that needs to be cut, I'll get you running on this video. But there is a lot that needs to be covered. So we're in the future, we're going to be actually applying these things on the machines. So we're going to get on a mill, we're going to get on a lathe, and I'm going to show you guys how to find out the speeds and feeds, and we're actually going to test it. We're not just going to talk about it. But in this video, in the next couple of videos of definitions, you just got to you just gotta bear with me. We got to get through the definitions first. That way we can apply those definitions on the machine. And you, you, you know, when you go to college for this stuff too, they might throw you on a machine immediately, but it's nice to talk the talk before you walk the walk. So we're going to begin with what are feeds and speeds? Why are they so important? Why are they so hard to learn? Because I've taught a lot of people and at the very beginning, they're like, okay, well, what are feeds and speeds? Like, what should I be doing? It's not a black and white answer. There are a lot of variables from the bottom of the machine to the top of the machine that affect feeds and speeds. So we're going to go into that. And then at the very end, we're going to be going over five tips that will get you started today at the end of this video, if you really wanted to. All right, let's begin. What are feeds and speeds? So feeds and speeds are pretty simple when it comes to the definition. You have a spindle head on a mill, you have a spindle head on a lathe. Well, you have to tell the machine how fast to spin that spindle. So speed, feed rate on a mill, you put your cutting tool inside of that spindle and you tell it the, the machine how fast to spin the spindle, but you also have to tell it how fast to feed the tool across the material. So usually it's measured in inches per minute. So for every minute that goes by, you have to tell the machine, okay, well, I wanna travel 200 inches per minute. So therefore, if the tool was just running a straight line, every minute that went by, the tool would travel 200 inches per minute. So you have to tell the machine that. On a lathe, you're also going to be telling it that. Now the difference between, and we're going to have a video on all these different machines, a mill and a lathe. On a mill, you're going to put the cutting tool in the spindle. In the spindle on a lathe, you're going to be putting the material. So you, it's, it's a little tricky to think about, but on a lathe, the spindle is spinning the material, and then the tool itself is stationary, and you have to tell it how fast to feed across the material. So the spindle speed is the material on a lathe, and the feed rate is telling the tool how fast to feed across it. On a mill, you have kind of the opposite scenario. So you have a part like this, this fellow right here in a vise, and then you have a tool in the spindle. Well, you're telling the machine, I want that end mill to go 5,500 RPMs. And we'll go into RPMs on the next video. And, but it's telling the spindle how fast to go. And then you're gonna tell it, all right, well, I wanna go 50 inches per minute across that material. That's the very, very, very basic concept of feeds and speeds. So let's go into why are they so important. Number one, safety. You know, part go boom, you get hurt. So don't do that. If you feed too fast, if you don't know what you're doing, you could crash the machine, you could hurt yourself, you could hurt others, you could kick a part out of a lathe and shoot it across the shop. That's happened before. So knowing your speeds and feeds and the scenarios that you're in are very, very critical because you could hurt, hurt yourself, hurt someone. All right, the next reason it's so important is time and money. You can't get back time. So if I quote a part for eight hours and you take 16 hours to machine that part, sometimes you might have to have that. But a lot of that is under the control of your feeds and speeds. If I machine a part, and I'm taking a hundred thou pass and you're machining a part and you're taking half of that, I'm going to be done twice as fast. And especially if we had the same speeds and feeds, but I'm stepping over more. And a part of that is going to be in your definitions, uh, your depth and width of cut and all that is going to be explained to you. But all that is tied up into the feeds and speeds. So when somebody's talking about, hey man, I need a feed and speed, they're, they're looking for more information than just how fast a spindle go is going and how fast the tool is feeding. They're looking for a lot more information. And that is why I'm going to be making more 
more videos going into this. Okay, another reason they are so important is, and a lot of people don't think about this, the stress that is being put inside of your material. There's a video out there on, on YouTube somewhere where it's showing a microscopic image of material being sheared away with a cutting tool. And there's these things called micro fractures, stress, and if you're using a dull tool and you're cutting material, that's actually putting stress into your material. And you can actually open a vise and see your material spring and move and it's it's not great but if you're using the right tools and the right feeds and speeds your part won't have a lot of stress in it and then you can heat treat it and heat treat releases all that stress so if i machine a part and you machine a part and you're using the right feeds and speeds and the right tooling and i machine the same part but i'm using dull tooling with the wrong feeds and speeds or even sharp tooling with the wrong feeds and speeds i'm going to put stress into my part now we put it through inspection they both look good but let's say we both put them in the heat treat oven my part's going to warp your part's going to be just fine so knowing feeds and speeds are very important when it comes to all these different reasons and I, I guess the last one's gonna be part go boom you don't want part go boom you want part good so why are feeds and speeds so hard to learn let's talk about it like this you give 100 musicians a song to play and let's say it was in the chords of G D E minor C you're gonna get 100 different versions of that same exact song. So, you can play it like this. Or you can go. So there are a bunch of different ways. And musicians are all different. Well, people are just different. That's, that's what machining is, it's an art. So if you have 100 machines lined up and you hand on 100 machinists the exact same setup with the same tools and you tell them, machine your parts, well, you're going to get a hundred different ways of A, machining that part. B, the times are going to be different because people are all using different feeds and speeds. And let's say you even handed them a very basic feed and speed beginning. Well, by the end of that machine or that machining process, they're allowed to adjust the speeds and feeds as they go, but they're given something to get started with. Well, out of those hundred machinists, you're still probably going to end up with a good amount being different. They're not all going to end up on the same page and they might all have a done part at the very end that is perfect when it comes to dimensions, but your feeds and speeds are going to be different on each one. So that's why it's so difficult to explain to people because it's not black and white. You're not all going to end up on the same page. And for those of you that are machinists that are working with other machinists, you know that if I have a program to somebody else they're going to reprogram it or they're going to try to depending on the company rules but most of the time everybody's on different pages so it's the same thing as playing songs you know you might hand this to me and one other musician we're going to play it two different ways definitions so let's go over definitions I am going to be making a bunch of videos about this because if I did go over every single one, this would take a 10 hour video. This would have to be a 10 hour video. So we're just going to briefly describe the things that we're going to be learning in the next part of the series. We're going to be learning RPM versus surface feet per minute. We're going to be going over velocity. We're going to be going over depth of cut, width of cut. Uh, we're going to be going over more in depth on, you know, spindle speeds and feeds. We're going to be testing all of this and I am not going to be able to just go into all this right now. So I think the most important thing for us to do at this juncture is going into the five steps that we're going to need to get you going right now. And then through the next few videos, we're going to be going over all these different definitions in more detail with examples and graphics and things like that. So you understand in your head what's happening on the shop floor, because if you're going in there blind, you're going to hit a lot of walls and trip over a lot of things. So in order to not be falling all over the place, you need to take a minute, understand the definitions, and then we can go into how to how to apply said definitions. So we have number one, which is go with the manufacturing recommendations. So if you buy an Ingersoll or Kenamental tool, go to their website. They will have it all displayed on charts and the charts we will be going into how to understand them. But if you're in a bind, you're going to have to try to figure it out or you can talk to a sales rep so you can message them on their website and just start there. I've gotten recommendations and they've worked great and I've gotten recommendations and they didn't work great. For example, I had a one inch end mill that was four, 
five, five inches long. And I was told to go this speed and feed on this material. Well, he didn't know anything about my setup and that's one of the variables. I ended up completely different than their recommendation. But if you're in a bind and you need to get started somewhere, start with the manufacturing settings. Now you can also use HSM Advisor or FS Wizard. Those are other two resources that you can use. And you just plug in all your information. You, you tell them what tool you're using, what material you're cutting, and then it'll help you get started. And that brings me to my next point. Number two, material. Know your material and how it's gonna cut. Know what coolant to use, which is another variable. Know what type of tool to use because you know your softer materials like aluminum are kind of gummy. 304 stainless, kind of gummy. You have your stills, less gummy. And, but all these things are, you know, machinability of that material. Get on Google, do a little research. So step one, go with uh, manufacturing recommendations. Step two, know your material. And now we will move on to Number three. Now, I, I do this. I get made fun of by people that recognize it, but I can't physically, I can't. Anyway, number three. Know your setup. You can have a weak setup, have all the perfect tooling, have all the perfect feeds and speeds for that exact material. You go with all the recommendations and then all of a sudden the part go boom. Why did part go boom when feeds and speeds were correct? Your setup was bad. Or... You, you might have, again, the guy that gave me the one inch end mill didn't know my setup. Well, my setup was a little bit different than what was in his head. Usually the recommendations are for perfect situations. So you're holding on in a vise or a chuck, you're holding on to a lot, you're real short and sturdy, but the, the further your part gets away from your setup and the more chattery it could get, the more your feeds and speeds need to change, which moves me on to number four. Number four is going to be start around i would say 50 and again you can look in the comments i'm sure people will also have recommendations but for me i would start around 50 to 70 percent on the feed rate you can leave your spindle where it's at slow down your feed rate on your machine and then once that tool makes contact start bumping it up and just the rest is really by ear a lot of feeds and speeds and i hate to say it it's by gut it's by experience and it's by the sound it makes and then you should know how to adjust it so it's just going to take experience learning feeds and speeds we can go through this entire master class series and all this is going to do is get you a really good starting point that's all it's going to do it's a starting point because of all the variables that take place into said feeds and speeds number five Adjustment. How do you adjust your feeds and speeds? Again, it's all by ear and feel. Part go boom, you did something wrong, there's not much time for adjustment. But if it's cutting and it's sounding like poop, first thing you can do is slow your feed rate down a little bit, and then if it's a high squill, slow your feed or your spindle speed down. And we're gonna be going over this and it's probably gonna be best to teach you while we're on a machine cutting. So I want it cutting and I wanna make it sound bad and I wanna show you how to get out of that situation. But if your part is cutting and end mill not go boom, then you have time to make adjustments to get it right. Now it could be chattering and putting it into your part, but before you get close to a finished size, you really need to try to nail down your speeds and feeds in your setup. In the next video, we're gonna be going over RPMs versus surface feet per minute. We're gonna be giving you some graphs on that and or some graphics, I should say. And we're gonna be just briefly going over that. I don't think we have to take that much time to uh, really explain that. And then the next video after that, we're going to be going over some width and depth of cut and other definitions. And, and then we're going to try to get on a machine as fast as we can to start showing you these things. Because we can talk all day long. I'm going to talk about speeds and feeds. And I have stories on stories on variables that have happened. Meaning like I had an end mill hangout, chattered like crazy. All I did was move it up in the the uh the tool holder a hundred thou just like just a little bit all the chatter shut up part ran great so it's just small things small things that affect your outcome so our goal for this master class series is to get you a good starting point the and you know the knowledge to make adjustments so that's really the main goal of this master class series put it in the comments if you have any questions or during this master class series, if there's something specific you want to see, in which case we will go ahead and start putting it in our outline because I have this entire video series outlined. So if you have time, put it in the comments. And if you made it this far, 
thank you so much for taking your time to you know watch me and listen to my lecture and i hopefully it was entertaining and educational for you we do an outro hold on Thank you.